not only in my capacity as a lawyer, but as a leading political figure in Ghana and a presidential candidate for the general elections in December this year. The current impasse between the Supreme Court and Parliament of Ghana, in my view, is unwarranted, unjustifiable, unproductive, and unhealthy for our fledging democracy. Both the Supreme Court and Parliament must respect the Constitution and the laws of Ghana. The current impasse amounts to grandstanding by both institutions. The concept of separation of powers and checks and balances between the various arms of government are two sides of the same coin and logically reinforce each other. This must provide the context for resolving the dispute between the Supreme Court and Parliament. So, first, let me start with a case in respect of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, in its ruling on the application of the leader of the MPP caucus in Parliament, Honorable Alexander Alfredo Martin, to reverse the ruling of the Speaker of Parliament on the status of the four members of Parliament was, and in my considered and very respectful opinion, unconstitutional and could be described as an abuse of the power of the Supreme Court under Article 130, subsection 1, to interpret provisions of the Constitution. The Constitution of Ghana rightly so entrusts to the Supreme Court the responsibility of interpreting provisions of the Constitution. In this regard, the Supreme Court has both original and final jurisdiction for the interpretation of our Constitution. Any application brought before the court seeking interpretation of any provision of the Constitution to the extent that application that the application is filed in line with the processes and procedures of the Supreme Court would be deemed to have been properly brought before the Supreme Court. Against this background, I hold a contrary view to the position adopted by the respected retired justice of the Supreme Court, Justice Atukuba, that the Supreme Court should have declined jurisdiction in the matter under reference. The Supreme Court was right in hearing the application to the extent that it was a request for interpretation of the Constitution. Article 97.1 G and H of the Constitution cannot be said to lack clarity <coughs> and therefore does not lend itself to an inquiry of interpretation by the Supreme Court. The said provisions are very clear on the face of the law in both spirit and letter and unconditionally impose a duty on the Speaker of Parliament to declare vacant the seat of any member of Parliament who decides to change their status in parliament, parliament either by declaring themselves as independents or on account of losing their membership of the parties that originally sponsored their entry into Parliament. For the avoidance of doubt, Article 97, 1G and H reads as follows, and I quote, A member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament if 
does give. If he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of his election to parliament to join another party or seek to remain in parliament as an independent member. H. If he was elected a member of parliament as an independent candidate and subsequently seeks to join a political party. This is reference to both Article G and H of Article 97. It is obvious from 